I'm wondering if I can, since, since I'm being recorded here, I wonder if I can do it without the mic. I think I did it last time without the mic. Can I ask? Do you, do you hate that idea? When I came here, I was wearing my Lexus hat, but I was told I can't stand up in front of you all without having a phone I'm pleased to do that. I'm going to ask Brad about that. Yeah. Anyway, it was just appropriate to hear okay. the You know me, I'm loud enough. Started it up and Go back to the back. Okay, you guys let me know. Okay. Exponentially, so I really appreciate everybody's support. And uh, before we, I turn it over to Randy, I'd like to give the blessing to Lord Jesus, thank you for gathering us here together so we can all yes, Jesus. Uh, celebrate you and honor you in everything that you provide to us. Lord, anointing. And I just want to, you know, bless this food and, and all the fellowship and friendship that we have together. And that you just uh, bless us with your holy power and your holiness in us. And be wonderful. So, Lord, I just ask that you do that. In your holy name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Good morning. Can you guys hear me without the microphone? How about you guys in the back? That's all right? That will, that will help me. Uh, I like to not have to hold something, so that will be perfect. Hey, it's an honor for me to be back today, so thanks for coming out. Of course, a free lunch doesn't hurt either, right? Uh, but we are honored that you've come out to, to be a part of this. I'm excited to be here tonight. Ramey told me they always show the uh, video. I'm like, you know what? I'll come out and, and, and do it live for the second shift. And so I'm excited to do that. I'm excited to be here for the first meeting of the year. And I'll tell you today what I want to do is I want to challenge you with something that I think will impact 2016 in a huge way for you. It, it's a small thing that when we get it right will make a big difference in our life. You know, I think that's sometimes a truth that we overlook. I think sometimes we think that in order to get a big difference, we got to do big things, right? Big things bring big differences. Big things bring big results. But, but that's simply not the case. You know, let's think about it in this way. If you wanted to read through the Bible this year, that just seems like a, a daunting task. But yet, with 15 minutes of reading a day, you could read through the Bible. It's a small thing that gives you a big result, makes a big difference in the end. To pray with our spouse on a regular basis that's intimidating. That's intimidating sometimes for me as a pastor. But you know what? The 30-second the prayer before you go out the door can take that relationship and make it grow stronger, make it grow closer, make it really be something that, that you've always dreamed that it would be. It's a small thing that when we change it, when we get it right, makes a big difference. Just a couple weeks ago, I read an article from the uh, Harvard School of Medicine where they came out and said that seven minutes a day of low impact cardio or 50 minutes a week will expand your life expectancy. That's huge. Seven minutes of low impact. You guys are probably doing that walking from your station and back here. You know, it just really is something that's small that makes a big difference. This next one, one of our staff members experienced in his life. At the beginning of each year, our church does a 21 day prayer and fasting focus. And last year, he noticed that during this 21 days, his, his body odor started to increase. And he's like, I mean, nobody loves their body odor to increase. But, but at the same time, he's, he's kind of proud because he's thinking, oh, man, I'm detoxing. I'm getting all the junk out of my body during this time. That was until he noticed that the new deodorant he bought had a film or a cap over the top of it. It wasn't <laughs> detox. It was the lack of deodorant, you know. Small thing that makes a big difference. So what is the thing that I want to talk about today? It's our thoughts. Getting our thinking right. Not just positive thinking. Please don't, don't think that. It, we're not talking about a self-help thing. We're talking about biblical thinking. When we get that right, it impacts so many things in our life. Let, let, let me just kind of play out this scenario. Our thoughts impact our attitude, right? Our attitude is seen in our words. Our words become our actions. Our actions become our habits. Our habits become our character, right? And our character ultimately becomes our destiny. So in a very real way, in a, in a real equation, you could say that our thoughts equal our destiny. That's how important our thoughts are. You know, the Bible put it into 
one sentence in Proverbs. You have a handout there, and you don't have to fill anything in. I've filled everything in for you, but it will be easy to follow along. But Proverbs 23, verse 7 says this, For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So true, because our thoughts lead to our attitude, attitude to words, words to actions, actions to habits, habits to character, and character to destiny. I'll tell you, I want to kind of just rephrase that to see how it's lived out in our life. And again, something that I put on your notes, but this is the key thought that I want you to take, is our life will always move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Your life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. It really is a, a keystone habit. I don't know if you're familiar with a keystone habit. There's actually a book called The, the, the Key of Habit. And a keystone habit is this. It's a, it's a habit that produces other habits in your life. So a good keystone habit is a good habit that produces other good things in your life. A bad habit, bad keystone habit, produces bad things in your life. Right thinking is a keystone habit that when we get it right, man, it just overflows. Attitudes, words, actions, right? Habits, character, ultimately into our destiny. And so what I want to do in, in our time together this morning is I just want to kind of break my talk down into two segments. First of all, I want to show you how your thoughts impact your life in a significant way so that as we roll into 2016, you'll, you'll realize, man, yeah, I've got to get this right. In order to make this year God's best for me, I've got to get this area right. But then the second half of the talk is I actually just want to give you two disciplines that I'm convinced will help us to think differently, to think biblically, so that it leads to the right attitude, right words, right actions, right habits, right character, ultimately the right destiny. Everybody on board? Yeah. All right, so let me show you the, the impact of our thoughts. There on your handout, I put our nature will follow our strongest thoughts. When I, when I speak to, to nature, I'm speaking about being positive or negative. I'm talking about being selfish or selfless. I'm talking about being a life-giving person or a life taking person, somebody that is full of joy or somebody that nobody wants to be around, the victor or the victim. Your nature, my nature, will follow our greatest thoughts. And so we've got to recognize that so that we can get this area right in our life. I'll tell you, the, the Apostle Paul, I think, does a great job of, of helping us to see the significance of how our nature will follow our strongest thoughts and the, the, the importance to making sure that we get it right. Look at that passage there, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is Paul speaking. He says, five different times the Jews gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with a rod. Once I was stoned. Not recreationally either. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I traveled for many weary miles. I faced danger from flooded rivers and from robbers. I faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the city, in the desert, and on the stormy seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be Christians but are not. I have lived with weariness and pain and sleepless nights. Often I've been hungry and thirsty and have gone without food. I have shivered with cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. I mean, Paul really experienced some terrible things. But yet when we look at his character, man, he is somebody who is, is, is positive. He's somebody who is encouraged. He's somebody who has tremendous peace in his life. He, he never felt like a, a victim. Man, he felt victorious. You think, how can somebody who experienced all of that have that perspective? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, obviously, I think it's the presence of God in his life. I think he probably surrounded himself with some great people who were positive and encouraging. But I'll tell you, one of the most significant things, I believe, for Paul is that his thoughts were right. His thoughts were godly. His thoughts turned to God's word, leaned on God's word. He, he, he thought right, 
And as a result, his attitude was right, his words were right, his actions, his habits, his character, his destiny. Our nature will follow our strongest thoughts. Let's go to the next one. It's not just our nature, but also our character will follow our strongest thoughts. And here I'm talking about our moral character. If, you're, if you are taking notes or writing something down, that, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being godly or ungodly, pure or impure, right or wrong. Our, our character is going to follow our strongest thoughts. Let me give you a, a biblical example of that. In the Old Testament, remember the, the story where Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers. The Bible tells us that, that Joseph is the baby of the family. I'm the baby, and, and us babies, we do not apologize for being the favorite. You know, we just, we're thankful for that. So he's the favorite of the family, and because of that, his brothers are jealous. His brothers hate him, and ultimately the Bible tells us that they, they plot to kill him. Well, then they change their mind and say, you know, let's not kill him, but let's sell him into slavery. Well, let me tell you, where did that come from? That, that wasn't just a decision that they made at the spur of the moment. It all started with their thinking. Man, they, they, they thought jealously of him. They thought in hateful ways towards him. And from that, their words, I'm sure, followed. But we definitely know that their actions followed. Why? Because our character will follow our strongest thoughts. Now, now step back and look at Joseph, the guy who gets sold into slavery. Not a very good deal. In fact, the, the, the Bible even tells us that at one point, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. But yet, the Bible says that, that Joseph ran away from her. He didn't want to be anywhere near her. You say, how, how could he do that? It's because of his thinking. Man, Joseph was, was, was a godly man. He thought the right thoughts, godly thoughts, pure thoughts. And because of that, it truly impacted his character, ultimately his destiny. The same is true for you and me. Our character will follow our strongest thoughts. Again, that's why I'm saying that if 2016 is really going to be a great year for us, we've got to get this area right. For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. It's not about positive thinking. It's not about self-help. It's about aligning our thinking with God's word. Let me give you two more areas, and i I probably need to speed up. You guys tell me if I'm going too long. The, the next one is this, is our relationships. Our relationships will follow our strongest thoughts. Our close relationships, like with our spouse and our children, but, but, but also just the, the workplace relationships. Even relationships that we have in the community, they will follow our strongest thoughts because here's the reason, is because our our value that we place on people will follow the way that we think about them. Our words that we use with people will follow the way that we think about them. Our interaction with people will follow the way that we think about them. Now, now put that into context with your spouse. Put that into context with your kids. See, so the wrong thoughts ultimately can lead to damage, to destruction, to hurtful relationships. But the right thoughts can lead to taking that relationship to the next level, can make it greater, can make it stronger. That, that's, so, that's so significant. I, I often tell people, because I, I, I believe this with all of my heart, the most important conversation you have in the day, next to our time with God, is the conversation you have with yourself. What's rolling around in here? Because it's that significant, because it's gonna impact your nature, whether you're that positive, negative, Life-giving, life-taking, joyful person or person that nobody wants to be around. It's going to impact your character, godly, ungodly, pure, impure, right, wrong. It's also going to impact your relationships. I'll tell you, you want to see your relationships go to the next level this year, begin to change the way you think towards the people around you. And then the, the, the last area where it really impacts us is our faith will follow our strongest thoughts. Our, our thoughts influence our faith. Our, our, our thoughts influence what we believe about God. Our thoughts influence what we believe we can really experience, the freedom we can experience, the, 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 the power we can experience. And because of that, it, it, it ultimately, my thoughts influence my relationship and my experience with Jesus Christ. 
That's the, the power, the significance of our thoughts. By, by no means is that a complete list, but it's a significant list. Our nature, our character, our relationships, our faith, we've got to get this area right. So on your handout, I put on there what I call a thought audit. I want you to think about what you're thinking about. So on a scale of, of 1 to 10, are you a worried, fearful person? Or do you tend to be a person that's full of, of, of peace and faith? The second one, are you a, a negative person, a critical person, or are you a positive? That may be one like your neighbor might need to answer for you. You know, that's, we might get a better, a better answer, or your spouse might need to answer that for you. The third one, critical or praising. That's, that's a... That's a significant one to me, critical versus praising. I, I, I tell my, my staff at the church that I've got this disease. It's really not a disease, but what I do is I, I, I can walk into a room and there could be a hundred right things and one wrong. And I'm going to see the, the one wrong. It just, it's part of my nature. But I tell you, I want to change that because I don't want to be that negative person. I don't want to be that life-taking person. I mean, I want my nature to be a godly nature. I want my nature to be a nature that builds people up, that encourages people, that helps people. And so I want to change my thinking in that way. Do you see the worst or do you see the best? Are you somebody who your thoughts lack faith or your thoughts are full of faith? The last one, worldly or eternal. You know, when you wake up in the morning, do you think about, man, today God's given me an opportunity to make a difference at Toyota. God's, God's given me uh, the opportunity to make a difference amongst my friends, amongst my neighbors, amongst the people around me. Or do we think, oh man, today I can't wait to go buy that new whatever. Where are your thoughts? I want you to think about what you're thinking about because our life will always move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And so you know what, the Bible helps us. How can we change our thinking? Look at that passive scripture there from Romans. Chapter 12, verse two says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you what? By changing the way that you think. Again, th that's why this is a, a spiritual topic, an, an important topic. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So here's what I want to do is I, I want to give you two disciplines that I'm trying to implement into my life to be a different thinker this year. And I'll tell you what, I've been, I've been challenged on a regular basis with it. But I'll tell you, I think you will too. But I'll tell you, the fruit of this is so significant and so powerful. So, so let me give you the, these two things and then I'll be done. The first one is this, identify and reject destructive thoughts. Identify and reject destructive thoughts. Again, that means identify and stop destructive thoughts. And what I mean by destructive, they're the wrong thoughts, the negative thoughts, the, the ungodly thoughts, the non-biblical thoughts. We're gonna identify and reject those. There's two passages of scriptures on your handout. The first one speaks to identify, and the second one speaks to reject. Because look at Proverbs 4, 23. It says, carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. Carefully guard. You know that saying? Hey, think about what you're thinking about. Be aware of what you're thinking about and, 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 and assess it. Assess your thought. A ask yourself, is this the way that God would want me to think about this person? Is this a biblical way to think about this situation, this scenario? Is, is this what God's word says? Be aware of what you're thinking about. Guard your thoughts because they are the source of life. But then the second verse, I think, here also speaks to reject. Look at it. It says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We, demol we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And look, here's the part. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient 
to Christ. So we are going to identify, we're going to be aware, we're going to assess what we're thinking about, and anything that is contrary to God's word, we're going to stop it, we're going to reject it, we're going to take it captive. So the negative thought, you know what, I've got to stop that. Let me tell you, because you'll always find what you're looking for, and if you want to look for the negative, you'll find it. But if you will look for the positive, you'll find it too. Here's this, the, the, the significance of, of negativity. It's kind of the, the, bolt, the vulture hummingbird analogy. What's the hummingbird do all day? Flutters around and looks for that nectar, that sweet spot. And a vulture flies around and looks for what? Leftovers, dead. And here's the thing is we become whichever we are. We want to be that, that, that hummingbird. So we've got to identify and reject, identify and stop the negative thoughts, the fearful thoughts about your family, about your finances, about your future. You've got to identify those. And those things that are contrary to God's word, I've got to identify those and I've got to stop them. Why? Because, because this is a keystone habit because it's going to feed so many other things in my life. My attitude, my words, my actions, my habits, my character, my destiny. identify and stop, identify and reject. I'll tell you, there, there, there's an us factor here and there's a God factor here. The us factor is this, is we've got to want to stop the wrong thoughts. And I'll tell you what, if we're willing to do that, God will step in and give us the power to help us. Identify and stop, but we know we can't stop just there. The next point is this, is we've got to then replace destructive thoughts with God's word, right? So I'm going to identify them. I'm going to stop them. Well, how, how do I stop them? I can't just stop it and, and my mind be empty. No, I'm going to identify them and stop them, identify them and reject them. And then I'm going to replace them with what God's word does say. Let me show you what that looks like. Well, Randy, you don't, you don't, you don't know me. My past is just so messed up. Man, I could never make a difference with my life. No, that's not what God's word says. God's word says that as a Christ follower, you are a brand new person. You are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do incredible things. It doesn't matter what your past has been. It doesn't matter how ugly it's been. It doesn't matter how colorful it's been. You are a brand new person in Christ Jesus. Well, yeah, but, but, but everything bad always happens to me. I'm, I'm always the one that gets the short end of, of, of the stick. You know what? Jesus did say that in this world you will have trouble. But he went on and says, but take heart for I have overcome this world. And better yet, I take all things and I work them together for the good of those who love me, which I do, and who are called according to my purpose, which I am. Yeah, but, but I've got this hang up. I've got this, this addiction in my life, this short coming in my life. I, I can't remember life without it. I, I'm always going to, to, to be like this. No, the Bible says the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. You are more than a conqueror. You can be victorious. That's who you are. Yeah, but my marriage, you don't know how my marriage has been. And it's just, it's been horrible. My, my marriage is in an impossible place, perfect. Because my Bible says, that God's the God that takes the impossible and makes it possible. He's the God that steps in and takes something that doesn't have a way, and he makes a way. He turns the deserts into the streams. He turns the dry lands into flood that's good and powerful and awesome. Yeah, but I'm in, I'm in so much debt, I'll never, we'll, we'll never. No, that's wrong thinking. Yeah, you need to learn to live within your means. You need to do some things different. That's the us factor. But then there's a God factor that says, my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. Yeah, but, but, but you know, I've been sick and the doctor says this. You know what? I'm thankful for doctors and I'm thankful for medicine. And I say you use those to our fullest extent. But I am most thankful for the God who heals and says, by my stripes, you are healed. It's taking wrong thoughts, negative thoughts, unbiblical thoughts. Again, remember, I'm not talking about self-help. I'm not talking about just being positive. I'm talking about aligning our lives and our thoughts 
with God's words. I know you guys need to go. Here's what I want to challenge you with. What one area is God speaking to you to change your thinking? Towards one person? Spouse? Friend who betrayed you? What, what one area is God asking you to change your thinking? Or maybe it's a situation. And let's change it. Let's make sure our thoughts align with God's word. Because it's that keystone habit. And when we get this right, man, it will make 2016 an incredible year. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you for every person that's here. Lord, and I just pray in Jesus' name that you would help us all to identify and reject destructive and wrong thoughts. And God, give us the power to replace them with your word, with your promises, and your truths. Lord, bless every person. Bless their marriage. Bless their home. God, do incredible things in them this year. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the strong Son of God, we pray. Amen. Guys, thanks for